Hello and welcome to another episode of Inviscope. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. We are back again with some of the latest from the IT and science world. Let's take a look at today's upcoming stories. First up, we have good news that the 37th International Geological Congress 2024 will be hosted in Busan, Korea. Currently, insiders expect about 6,000 delegates from 120 nations who will all come together to discuss the matters related to geology. We'll have more details on this in just a bit, but before that, Korean researchers have developed a machine that can split oil from water on site. How can this effectively help clean oil spills out at sea? We'll find out in our first segment, Briefing Scope. Korean researchers have developed a machine with homegrown technology that can immediately break down and pick up oil at the site of an oil spill. The machine uses nanofilters to split oil from water, and it takes one minute to do so in a lab. This machine will not only help minimize damages from oil spills, but also be competitive in the global market. Busan was elected as the host city for the 37th International Geological Congress 2024, defeating the rival city of Berlin, Germany. Busan will promote Busan National Geopark on the global stage and work toward having it join the Global Geoparks Network. A 25-year-old coma patient was exposed to low-intensity focused ultrasound pulsation targeting the brain and regained full consciousness. Researchers from UCLA plan to conduct additional tests stating that they could have stimulated the patient just as he was spontaneously waking up. The infrastructure and technology owned by the Korea Institute of Science and Technology Information will be used to predict climate change by the World Meteorology Organization. Some of the technologies include a collaborative platform that includes 10 web-based services and a testbed. It always makes me happy and very proud when I hear about how Korean technology is being used around the world. We'll keep you updated on how these Korean technologies and infrastructures will be used to predict climate change. But in other news, Korean small and medium-sized companies are also making names for themselves on the global stage. With experience and expertise from abroad, Korean IT experts are giving an extra boost to the Korean tech industry. We'll have more information on that shortly. But first, let's take a look at a story about cooking. Did you know that there have been different efforts to incorporate science into cooking? How can this affect both the appearance and the taste of food? We have more about this and more coming up on Industry Inside. As a yellow juice meets a transparent liquid, it turns into gelatin. Using a syringe, the drops fall like small marbles. The yellow liquid is a mixture of juice, water, and alginic acid found in seaweed, and the transparent liquid is water with calcium chloride. Algin acid and calcium chloride react to create a transparent wall, which keeps the juice from mixing with water. As a result, the juice bursts with flavor in the mouth. Mixing juice and a transparent liquid creates fumes in ice cream. The liquid is liquid nitrogen, often seen in labs, and its temperature can fall as low as minus 196 degrees Celsius. Using liquid nitrogen instantly creates ice cream with a unique texture. From meat cooked at 65 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes to smoked chicken made with a special piece of equipment that burns acorn wood. All dishes have been prepared via unconventional means and feature unique appearances and tastes. The implementation of science in cuisine has made cooking all the more enjoyable for all. No Yoon Sun used to work in Microsoft for seven years before returning to Korea in 2013 and working at a small and medium sized Korean enterprise. With her experience, she's helped double her company's overseas profits over the past three years. Uh, 
This SME specializes in designing semiconductors. It ran into hurdles while working on improving smartphone cameras as it wasn't able to obtain the key technology. 부족한 부분들을 누군가가 좀 채워줘야 저희가 하고자 하는 그 목표를 이룰 수 있다고 판단이 되어서 Eventually, the company hired a researcher based in the United States who had relevant knowledge and succeeded in commercialization. 결국 R&D 경험, 자기가 이제 리서치를 하고 이제 문제를 어떻게 해결해 나느냐 하는 그 경험이 중요한 것 같습니다. These Korean experts came back through the expatriate talent scouting program. This project is meant to stem the outflow of Koreans going overseas and provide expert manpower to small and medium-sized enterprises. 해외 인재 유치를 통해서 그 ICT 분야 중소기업이 106건의 특허 출원 등록을 하였고 또 100억 원 이상의 매출을 올렸습니다. This project has brought home 41 experts. The government plans to improve relevant policies to continue bringing more experts back to Korea. Pine wilt disease affects the vascular system of pine trees, killing afflicted pines with no exception. Despite preventative measures, wilt disease results in numerous damage every year. Japanese pine sawyers dig into pine trees and live off the tree like a parasite. Now there is a way to make use of this parasitic relationship to prevent the disease. The solution lies in a species of wasps called Spathias verustus chow. This wasp lays up to five larvae on the larva of Japanese pine sawyers. The larva of the wasp drain the Japanese pine sawyer larva, killing it. Out of ten Japanese pine sawyer larva, more than five were killed in this manner. Using these wasps can significantly reduce the deaths of other insects caused by the use of pesticides. Researchers hope that using another natural enemy of the Japanese pine sawyer in tandem with the wasp will prevent pine wilt disease even more effectively. Lucy was discovered in 1974 in Ethiopia. Her remains date as far back as 3.18 million years. Lucy shared many similarities with the chimpanzee, and some claim that she may have lived in trees. Now, U.S. researchers have presented evidence suggesting that Lucy may have met her end by falling from a tree. They used high-resolution CT scanning to analyze her remains and put her bones together on a computer. They pointed out a crushed shoulder joint and fractures in different bones, injuries that appear in a fall. The researchers state that when Lucy fell, her right leg made contact with the ground first and she instinctively reached out with her hands. Immediately afterwards, her organs and bones were damaged, leading to instant death. Likely, we think, based on uh, the position of the legs and also the arms, that she was conscious when she hit. But because of the severity of the fractures, it's very, I think, likely that she suffered severe internal organ damage. Calculating the force of shock on the bones show that Lucy may have fallen about 14 meters, a height where chimpanzees can be found. However, researchers say it's too early to determine whether Lucy lived in trees, as she may have climbed one to avoid predators. It's interesting to see the history of Lucy and how much human beings have evolved over time. I really wonder how we will physically look like and how our lifestyles will be in the future. I mean, will we even be able to continue living on Earth? I'm sure many of you have already heard from sources around you, but there are predictions about the future existence of Earth. So will people have to move on to another planet? And is there even another planet we could possibly live on? Well, scientists may have discovered a second Earth that is closest to our solar system. And for medical news, when the cornea in your eye is damaged, it cannot be healed or regenerated, leaving a transplant the only option. But Korean researchers have now found a protein that may help regenerate the layer of the skin on the inner surface of the cornea. Here are some more details on this next on Tech a Peak. The cornea acts as the lens for our eyes. When the corneal endothelium is damaged, the cornea becomes cloudy and vision drops. 
sometimes leading to blindness. 각막 내피가 손상이 되면은 자연적으로 치유가 안 되기 때문에 이제 좀 난치성 질환으로 많이 분류가 되어 있거든요. In the end, the only way out is a cornea transplant, but there are few donors in Korea, and it is costly to import from abroad. Now Korean researchers have discovered a protein that can regenerate the corneal endothelium, opening the way to new treatment methods. The protein is called angiogenin, and it can be found in the human body. By inserting it into the eye, it stimulates signaling compounds and quickly increases the number of cells in the corneal endothelium. Inserting the protein into a damaged cornea of a rabbit resulted in near total healing of the injury eight days later. The cloudy cornea became transparent again. 각막 내피를 다 망가 거의 망가뜨린 다음에 이 엔지오젠 물질 쓰게 되면은 그 남은 살은 몇 개의 세포만 있어도 내피 세포의 증식과 또 이렇게 재생이 일어나 가지고 투명한 각막으로 바뀌는 것 같다 우리가 볼 수가 있습니다. This method opens the way to treating damaged corneas without relying on transplants. It also increases the effectiveness of cornea transplants and suppresses inflammation, as well as reducing intraocular pressure. The closest ever second Earth candidate to date has been discovered. According to astronomers, there is a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri, the closest neighbor to our solar system. This planet, designated Proxima b, has astronomers giddy with excitement. This planet is only 4.24 light years, or 40.1 trillion kilometers away from Earth, and is said to be about 1.3 times as big. Moreover, there is a high chance that liquid water is present on the surface. If there is no atmosphere, it's actually minus 40 degrees. And if it has an atmosphere, it is actually pushing up the temperature through the greenhouse effect above zero degrees and in the liquid water habitable zone. Astronomers have discovered some 3,000 planets to date, but most of them are hundreds of light years away, making them virtually impossible to reach. However, Proxima b is predicted to be the first Earth-like planet that humans can reach and explore in the future. Y el primer paso para contestar esta pregunta de manera no filosófica o religiosa o cosas así, pero de manera factual, basada en datos científicos, es buscar señales de vida en estos planetas. Based on existing technology, it would take thousands of years to reach Proxima b. However, scientists and researchers are working on improving space travel, with a focus on creating a small spaceship that can travel at one-fifth the speed of light. This means that visiting and exploring other planets in person may actually become reality. Traveling across different countries seems like a lot of work to me, but can you imagine traveling across different planets? Seriously though, who knows Proxima b may end up being the second Earth in the future. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Now today's episode really brought us back and forth in time. We talked about Lucy from millions of years ago and then took a glimpse into future space explorations. And although we have so much more to share, this is the end of today's show. But we will be back again next week with more fun and informative stories. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye everyone.